Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Theory, the number one MMA DFS prep show in all the land. I'm your host, Monk, aka the Monk Magician. In this very episode, guys, we have got a 13 fight card. It is definitely a card, you could say that about it. UFC San Antonio with a good headliner, Cheeto Vera. Don't pick his nose there. You can pick your friends, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. Uh, going against Corey Sandhagen. We've got Nate Landwehr staring at a ghost up there. Uh, we've got him some okay fights, and then we've got some fights, uh, and then we've got uh, some fights. So uh, before we get started, please check out DFSArmy.com. You guys can use code MONK, M-O-N-K, save yourself some money on a VIP package today. Football may be over, but there are tons of other sports happening. I, I'm sure baseball is probably happening somewhere in the world. I think hockey just started. Uh, Esports is going on. We've got every single thing you could possibly play DFS with. That was a terribly constructed sentence, but uh, you get the idea. DFSArmy.com. Uh, use code MONK, M-O-N-K. Save yourself some money. Get all in our discords and start winning some money today, guys. Killing it over there at the Army. Let's get right into it. Hit the like, hit the sub on this channel. First fight, Tamir's Vidal going against Haley Cohen. Does everything look okay on my screen? I believe so. Vidal 7,800, Haley Cohen uh, 84. Haley was supposed to fight a couple weeks ago, I, get, I believe, against uh, Eileen Perez. Um, she was not able to make the fight for some reason. I forget what it was. Uh, so a medical issue that may or may not have had to do with the weight cut. I think not, but I don't remember. Um, but she is coming off of a Dana White contender series fight, put up terrible numbers, two points a minute, 61 points is what she would have scored against someone named Claudia Leite, uh, split decision win did not look great. Her strength of schedule is terrible. 55.59 is her strength of schedule right here. You want these numbers to be, there's my cursor. You want these numbers to be about 70. We are 15, 20 points below that in every single category. Uh, Tamaris Vidal, not too much better. Beat Ramona Pasquale. I don't know what that really says. I mean, it's 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 good to to get a win, but uh, Ramona Pasquale not the greatest opponent. Here are my projections. Very small sample size, guys. We got a Dana White contender series fighter against someone with one UFC fight. We'd all put up six and a half points a minute and one hundred nine point five per win. Um, so her DraftKings upside is way better. This is a women's bantamweight fight, not women's flyweight, which by the way overtook. Uh, the featherweight division, I believe, as most uh, highest percentage of making the optimal out of any weight class is now women's feather, uh, women's flyweight. So be sure to get on that. I think we'll be talking about that later on. I've already spent way too much time on this, guys. I like Haley Cohen. I think she can get the win here over Vidal. Vidal, I mean, while her numbers were impressive, I did not really find her impressive as a fighter. Um, her significant striking defense says it's seven percent. My goodness, that is uh. That is something. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go with Haley Cohen. I think she's more athletic. I think she can get uh you know, I just think she can get the job done over Tamir's Vidal. She should be the taller fighter. Um, maybe not the rangier fighter, but I do like her to get the win here. Very low level women's MMA fight. Yeah, we'll just keep it moving. Next fight, guys. Trey Ogden going against Manuel Torres. Again, very small sample sizes here. We do have two fights uh for Trey Ogden in the UFC, just one. For Manuel Torres, uh, Ogden beat Daniel Zellhuber. I know a lot of you guys were on him. 9,400 Zellhuber was that week. And the 6,800 Ogden uh, put him away. Not only uh, kept him off the optimal lineup, but beat him at the $6,800 salary. Uh, only scored 64.74 points. So not a great uh, win, or not a great uh, showing for DraftKings, but a great win. Ogden did lose his uh, debut to Gordon Levitt. Meanwhile, Manuel Torres won his debut against Frank Camacho, KOTKOing him in uh, the middle of the first round. Here are projections, yada, yada, yada. Um, I think I like Trey Ogden here. He is the cheaper fighter, 7,700, uh, 8,500 for Manuel Torres. Torres has, uh, did make the optimal lineup. Again, another huge number as far as offensive pace, almost seven points per minute, even better. Then uh, Tamir's Vidal, 114 is what Torres put up in that win against Camacho. 13.74 uh, value. So we're going to see if he can keep that going. Um, but honestly, I mean, Trey Ogden looked pretty good. I think Torres trains with Zell Huber, so that could either be good or bad for Ogden. Uh, that has yet to be seen. I'll probably be fading this fight, question mark? 
I like Ogden to win, but I'll probably have more Torres just in case something crazy happens. Um, Torres also five and a half years younger than Ogden here, but Ogden proved to be one tough SOB. So uh, I don't really know what to think about this fight. Love the nickname Samurai Ghost. That's kind of a cool nickname. And El Loco, I mean, come on. That, that's fantastic. Uh, so, man, give me Ogden for the upset, but I'm not sure that he scores well. Um, and I just wish I had one more fight to see these guys. Give me uh, Manuel Torres, probably more ownership uh, at 8,500. Next fight, Victor Altamirano going against Vinicius Salvador. Uh, Salvador coming off a Dana White Contender Series fight. Seven points per minute is what he would have scored in his uh, nine and a half minute fight. 135.6 against Shannon Ross. Man, nobody gives up points quite like Shannon Ross. Uh, that's for sure. I believe Cletson Rodriguez fought him and scored 130 some. Salvador would have put up 130 in Dana White Contender Series fight. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting. Uh, wow, wild, wild stuff uh, there from Shannon Ross. But unfortunately, he's not fighting Shannon Ross. He is fighting Victor Altamoreno, who beat, I believe, Carlos Candelario. No, lost to Carlos Hernandez and then beat Daniel Da Silva, who's also on this card. KO'd him, scored 133 points. My goodness. Both these guys' last fights combined almost uh, almost 300 points between them. Um, very, very interesting. High scores here. Uh, I'll be playing both sides of this fight. A very even, um, you know, DraftKings salaries here. Four and a half points a minute is what Altamirano is scoring. Man, you cannot pass that up. 15.5 was his value last time. Absolutely love that. Um, I'm going to be excited for this fight. Ve again, another very low-level fight, guys. I believe we have a break next week, a week off. And they are not packing the card in between the pay-per-view and the week off, that's for sure. Um, San Antonio not getting the greatest show uh, on earth. We'll just keep it at that. Um, but still, we have fights, and I'm not complaining about that. Uh, give me Altamirano here. Um, El Magnifico against Phenomeno. Man, some great nicknames right off the bat here. Um, I will be targeting this fight. Men's flyweight. Um, been pretty violent as of late in the flyweight division. So give me Altamirano to win over the newcomer, but I really like this fight and I will be on both sides of it for sure. Next fight, everyone's favorite fighter, Steven Pers uh, I almost said Steven personality, <laughs> Steven Peterson, although we should start calling him Steven personality, um, going against Lucas Alexander. I like Peterson here. Uh, he is 8,700, three and a half points a minute, 90 points per win. That's not really going to get it done as far as optimal goes. Uh, since he is 8,700, he's $1,120 over his average salary over the past five with a less than 10 average value, uh, per win, which is over his last two wins. Um, wow. Alexander won UFC fight. He scored 0.2 points a minute. He scored 0.4 points in two minutes, um, allowed 7.27 points per minute and gave up 105 He's also $700 over his average salary. Wow. Um, man, Steven Peterson's a pretty tough SOB. He has dropped uh, three of his last five to Julian Arosa, decision. Alex Caceres, decision. Luis Pena, decision. Um, let's see. He put up 47, 45, and 65 in those losses. So not a bad scorer in a loss. 53 points almost on average. Um, that just backs it up. He's out of Fortis MMA. I love that. He gives up a lot of takedown and control time points, but Lucas Alexander scored none in his one fight against, uh, Joe Anderson Brito. That is a tough, uh, opponent for your first fight. He got subbed in two minutes. Here are my projections. Yeah, I'm going to be on the Peterson side. I'll probably have way more Peterson. I don't know how much Alexander I'll get to. Um, I probably will have some though, because I think he's going to be very low owned. And man, if you saw... The optimal lineup last week. We'll get into it at the end of the video, but woof, you're going to want some of these low end fighters in your lineup, guys, because man, that optimal lineup was ugly. I'll tell you what, Steven Peterson, uh, give me some of them to roster as well. And a little bit of Lucas Alexander. I'm going to play the ownership game with Alexander, and I'm going to just going to go over his ownership by like 5%, no matter what it is. Next fight, Trevin Giles. Preston's Parsons, Preston's Parson, uh, eight thousand dollars for Parsons, eighty two hundred for Giles. What are what are we doing here? Um, I mean Giles is unplayable in DraftKings. Two points a minute, sixty seven 
per win over his last three wins. He is $20 cheaper than his average salary. That's great, but his average value is like not even six and a half. His average points per loss is seven. He gives up 113 when he does lose. Meanwhile, Preston Parsons, two fights in the UFC so far. He did make the optimal lineup when he beat Evan Elder. That was one hell of a scrap. Lost his uh, debut to Daniel Rodriguez. Not a bad guy to lose to. Giles has lost to the undefeated Michael Morales and Drickus Duplessis. So b- all the, both of these guys have decent losses. Uh, Preston Parsons has a terrible dog shit strength of schedule. While Trevin Giles has one of the best because, uh, of course, he has fought the GOAT, Roman Delice. Um, Here are my projections. Very low for Giles, as you would imagine. Guy scores two points a minute. I might be picking Giles to win. I am undecided as of yet. But I like Preston Parsons for DraftKings. I mean, for his two fights, like I said, 4.69 a minute, 108. Maybe I didn't say. 108 is what he scored in his win. He also gave up 108 when he lost. Um, but, like I said, Giles does not score anything. He Two points a minute. One point a minute is what he scores striking. You can see down here. That is one of the worst numbers on the card. Um, half, you know, a quarter of his points are from when he scored a knockdown. So other than that, um, look for some takedown and control time. But both guys kind of have that game. So, uh, man, I'm picking a lot of dogs this week. Give me Preston Parsons for uh, for DraftKings. He's only 250 on a, over his average salary. So, uh, yeah, give me Preston Parsons here. You know, this card is, uh, we're going to get through this one quick. I was going to say, I'd be surprised if we're 10 minutes in. We are 11 minutes in. We're going to get through this one quick today. Um, just, yeah, it's 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 a interesting card. Daniel Pineda going against Tucker Lutz. Tucker Top Gun Lutz. Uh, I'm going Tucker Lutz here. Uh, Pineda is getting up there in age, almost 38. Let's see, he's 1-3 and three in his last four. Well, 1-3, one, one no contest. In his last five. This guy is at least two no contests, I believe. He got busted for steroids, I think, once or twice in his career. I don't even know, but I don't trust this guy as far as I can throw him. And what what's you know, you're gonna get busted at steroids at like 35 years old, and then you're gonna come back and do something. So yeah, no contest against uh Andre Feely. Lost to Swanson, lost to Robert Whiteford, lost to Diego Brandau. His only win in his last five is to the retired Herbert Burns. Is he retired? I th- thought so. I thought so, but I'm not sure about that, actually. Um, I like Tucker Lutz here. I mean, Pineda, in his one win, did score 137 points, but he does give up 100 points on average and almost you know, four or 4.25 points per minute is what he gives up. Lutz, you are paying up for him, but I think this is like... This is a feed-me type win, in my opinion. Um, average value per win, or in his one win, was 11.22, so that's not terrible. Scored 2.7 points a minute, 93 is what he put up in the win. Gave up 4 points a minute and 105 in the loss. Um, I just like Lutz here. I'm not a, his biggest fan, but his strength of schedule is uh, you know, 10, 15 points higher in every category than Daniel Pineda, who has a terrible, terrible strength of schedule. Lutz lost to Pat Sabatini. That's no joke. Dude's a killer. And then he beat the Angel of Death. Speaking of good nicknames, uh, Kevin Aguilar. Uh, beat him pretty handily by unanimous decision. Scored 93 points at $8,300. Um, didn't make the optimal lineup. Here are my projections. Like I said, I like Lutz. I like Lutz inside the distance. So as you can see, around one finish win is 105. Even round two, he keeps the consistency up. 103 is what I'm projecting for Tucker Lutz. Uh, round two win. So I don't mind that at all at 9,200. I'm not thinking the scores are going to be crazy, although this is a high variance card. so. The scores could be crazy, um, but I don't mind this for Tucker Lutz. Uh, I will have a bunch of him most likely. I don't know how much of Daniel Pineda I'm going I'm to be able to get to. I just don't trust him at all, especially at the uh, 37-year-old age mark. That didn't make sense. Next fight, CJ Vergara going against Daniel Da Silva. I'm on CJ Vergara here, guys. He's one and two in his last five. 10, four, and one as a pro. Daniel De Silva as uh is winless in the UFC, getting a fourth fight after going 0 and 3 to Victor Altamirano, also on this card, Little Figgy, and uh Jeff Molina. CJ Vergara, meanwhile, beat Cledson Rodriguez. That's a good win. Lost to Tatsuro Tyro. That's not a bad loss. Dude's a, I think dude's gonna be uh crazy good at flyweight. And then Ode Osborne for his intro fight to the UFC. That's not terrible either. Um, scores three points a minute. Like I said, 83 when he won, he is $2,167 over 
his average salary. He did make the optimal lineup when he won at 6,800 over Clinton Rodriguez, as you would expect. He's going to need significantly more points than 83 in order to make the optimal lineup here. Uh, the ideal score for optimum value, if you can read that, 123.79. Daniel De Silva, 6,900. How could you back this guy at all? Um, like I said, 0-3 uh, in the UFC so far. I like CJ Vergara. I think this is a get-right fight for Vergara. Um, not much to say about it. The strength of schedule is the other thing we'll look at here. 6, 7, 10 points better in some categories for CJ Vergara. As you would expect, here are my projections. Much, much higher for Vergara than for uh, Daniel Da Silva. Aggregate career finishing percentages professionally and in the UFC. 80% losses when they lose in the UFC. 80% total fights. 75% finishes. Um, yeah, I like CJ Vergara here. I think this is a get right fight. There's no way Daniel De Silva gets a fifth UFC fight, right? After he loses this one. Right? But the UFC gods, you know, the MMA gods will probably give him a win here. So then we have to give him a fifth fight. <laughs> Next fight. Dude, I think I'm all out of order here. Uh, I think I am all sorts of out of order. Let me um, very quickly. Let's see here. Uh, let me hold on. Sorry, I just got a message. Uh, I'm ignoring it because it's okay. Uh, I'm going to tapology on my phone. And then I'm going to go to this card and see what the freaking fight order is. Because I think I've been reading it incorrectly. Salvador, Torres, Vergar. Yeah, Vergar is fourth. Giles, Peterson we did. Pineda we did. Okay, so now we're at Chidi. We are at... Cheaty in Jokowani. I was about to go Nate Landwehr, but I knew he was third to last. So sorry for the delay. Here comes Cheaty. We've got Cheaty Perez Lee Landwehr. Let's see if I can remember that. Don't hold me to it. Cheaty Bang Bang and Jokowani going against Albert Derive. How could you trust Albert Derive here? But how could you trust Cheaty and Jokowani? I mean, past like the first round, basically. Uh, and Jokowani has made optimal in two out of his past three fights, but both of those were quick. Very quick wins. Let's see. First round finish over Dusko and first minute finish over MAB. He is eighty eight hundred dollars this week, so you are paying up five sixty seven for him. Uh, Four seventy one per minute is what Chidi scores. Best number on the card. One nineteen per win. Very very good. So when he gets it done in the first round, he really gets it done. He did give up five over five points a minute, or he does give up over five points a minute. And uh, when he did lose. To, I believe Robocop gave up 108, almost 109 points. Um, Albert Drive on the other side, 3.13 points a minute, just under 90 points per win, which would be decent for a $7,400 salary. Um, he is $1,000 under his average salary, and he is 1-1. One one. I believe he lost to Joaquin Buckley uh, and beat Roman Kopilov. That Roman Kopilov win is actually aging very, very well. Here are my projections before I get ready. Almost identical. Decision projections here. Uh, Chidi with a bit higher finish projections. I don't know what to do about this one, um, to be honest. Let's see here. Almost all the points Chidi scores are coming from striking and knockdowns. Obviously, he gets 0.4 points a minute in takedowns, or uh, I mean in control time. And he gave, he gave ugh, he's giving up two points per minute in takedowns and control time combined. Meanwhile, Duraev. Say what you want about him. 1.13 points per minute in those two categories. Maybe we got something going here. I will be playing this fight. Cheaty, obviously, you have to play Cheaty. Um, also, this is the heaviest fight on the card, and it's 185. I don't know if that means anything. Um, but Cheaty, got to play him for some of the first round upside. Um, Albert Dreyev has been finished four times in his career. All four of his losses have come by way of KO, TKO. And uh, believe it or not, that's how Chidi ends most of his fights. 14 of them out of 21 wins have come by KOTKO. So that is a definite path. Also, if Darayev is able to uh, withstand Chidi and maybe get some takedowns uh, in the end of the first round, maybe beginning of the second round, this could be a, an entirely different fight. So give me Chidi. I guess I don't mind having him for the first round upside. 8,800 is, uh, you know, not too expensive. But also give me some Albert Drive. I think he's going to go a little bit under the radar because he's coming off of that loss. I think if he can withstand, if, big if, he can, uh, you know, maybe get Njokawani down, maybe when he's tired, 
and maybe he can have some success in the second and third. So that's how we'll play this one. I do like this fight for DraftKings, and we will go from there. Um, who did I say was next? Alex Perez? I'm going to look. Yeah, Perez, then Lee, then Landwehr. Okay. Alex Perez going against Manel Cop. I like Cop here. Um, this is one underdog I really don't like a ton, even though, wow, maybe I'm taking this back, guys. He scores very well, Alex Perez. 4.68 points a minute, third best offensive pace on the card, 106.64 per win. I'm blown away. That's uh, over his last three wins. Juicier Formiga, Jordan Espinoza, Mark De La Ro Okay, these, guys, these fighters aren't good that he's fighting here. Outside of Formiga was 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 decent. Uh, lost to Pantoja, lost to Figgy, big Figgy, big Fig. Uh, Manel Cop three and two in his last five, but his last three wins are all in a row. David Dvorak, Zalga Zumagulov, uh, which uh, yeah he smashed Zumagulov, and then a win, a big win over Ode Osborne. Lost to Nikolaou, who's very good, and lost to Pantoja. Strength the schedule a little bit better for Cop than it is for Perez. Let's go ahead and look at the projections while we're down here. Uh, much better for Perez. Surprisingly, I did not know he had that kind of DraftKings game. I will have to play some of Perez, especially at that very low salary of $7,300, and you're getting this kind of upside. I don't care if you think he wins or not. You've got to play some of him. He's also 960 under his average salary. That's fantastic. However, he does have one of the lowest floors on the card. It should be noted, if you are going to play Alex Perez, he does have an extremely low floor. Um, decent ceiling. Top 10 ceiling, very low floor. So I'll be playing a bit of him. I'll be playing the ownership game with him. I want to see where he's coming in at. Um, I might have 20-ish percent. If he comes in at like 10 to 15, I might have 20 to 25. Um, Manel Cop, let's look at him quickly. 8,900, so he's right about his average salary. He has made optimal lineup two out of his past five fights. Three and two in those fights. He scores under three points a minute. But 103.6 when he wins does not allow any points at all. 2.3 defensive pace per minute. 65 is all his opponent's score. And he puts up about 30 per loss. Top 10 floor, top 10 ceiling. So a bit of a safer play here uh, from an El Cop. But you never won any DraftKings tournaments um, by playing safe. I mean, look at me last week. Muhammad Makayev, because he made optimal so many times. Casey O'Neill, because all she does is make... Guys, I had like five losers in my optimal lineup, and most of these people were under. Oh, last week was dog shit. Um, long story short, I'm gonna be a bit contrarian this week. Um, and now watch all watch it be just total chalk. Um, that said, Alex Perez, one point three five points per minute takedowns and control time. Manel Cop allows point six points a minute in those two categories. I like Cop to win. Honestly, I think he's the more athletic fighter. I think he's uh. You know, Alex Perez could get caught with a knee here. Um, Manel Cop does love to throw knees, loves to, loves to throw kicks. So Perez is going to have to uh, keep his head on a swivel, make sure he's not ducking and diving too much. Um, but other than that, I mean, I like Cop, but I like Perez's upside. Um, if Cop is not able to get his game going, I like Perez's upside. Lots of takedown and control time points. He's landed knockdown points as well. I mean, 0.8 per minute. Not, how many knockdowns do these guys have? Actually, I, that's not what I want to look at. Um, let's see. He knocked down Juicier Formiga twice. Let's see. Manel Cop knocked down uh, Dvorak. Knocked down Double Z, ZZ Top, uh, twice in their fight. Knocked down Ode Osborne. So he's got four knockdowns in his past three fights. Man, this fight's going to be fun. Love these flyweight bangers they're giving us lately. I like Cop for the win. I'm going to have a ton of this fight probably more than i should but i'm gonna have a lot of cop and i'm gonna have probably more than the field on perez just because of these very surprising DraftKings numbers here very surprising next fight andrea kgb lee um going against macy barbara i was gonna make some joke about kgb and and tony what's his name but it, i don't have i don't know what it, it is what it is um, <laughs> Macy Barber, let's see, let's start with her, 24 years old, going against 34 years old, 9,100 for old Macy, or young Macy, 2.29 points per minute is all she scores, 65 points in a win, guys, 65 points in a win over her last three, not interested, 440 over her average salary, 7.5 average value, 
Yeah, not interested. 0.75 points per minute in takedowns and control time. She gives up more than that. She only scores 1.28 points per minute in striking. Has not made the optimal lineup in any of her past four fights, but do you expect her to? At 6,500, and now she's $9,100. Is that the most expensive she's been? She was 91 against Jessica I, if that tells you anything. She scored 62.5 points, and I think almost lost that fight. Yeah, according to stats, she did lose that fight. Um, she was 9K against Montana De La Rosa, barely won that fight. And she was 9,500 against Roxanne Montefiore, and everyone knows how that fight ended, especially Macy Barber's father. Uh, 7,100 for Andrea Lee, 3.58 points per minute, very good. 109.67 per win over her last two wins against uh, Cynthia Calvillo, Antonina Shevchenko, not the best opponent. She did lose also, both of these women lost, to Roxanne Matafari. Wow. Uh, lost to Lauren Murphy and then Vivian Araujo in her last fight. Here are my projections. A little bit higher for Andrea Lee, as you would expect from those pacing numbers I just read off. Uh, the strength of schedule is about the same, both terrible, but Andrea Lee just, just edges out Macy Barber, which is a bit surprising to me. Um, both women have dog shit takedown defense, 47% for Lee, 50%. For Macy Barber, neither one of them want to control any kind of grappling time. Um, man, I guess I'm going with Barber for a very low scoring decision. Uh, I will be playing some Andrea Lee though, because guess what? Women's flyweight fight, and I'm not kidding. It actually should say on this uh, weight class probability is now number one overall. 55.7 percent of the time, a women's flyweight happens. Someone. From that fight makes the optimal lineup, guys. 55.7% of the time, that's the best number out of any weight class. Even better than featherweight now, after last week. Um, so for that reason, I say you have to play this fight. Plus, Andrea Lee does have some decent uh, DraftKings numbers. So I will be a bit over on her. You should be able to get her uh, very low ownership this week. A lot of people will be on Macy Barber. Or, more likely, a lot of people will just be fading this fight in general. I will be fading the hell out of Macy Barber at 9,100. I don't really see how she scores well. I mean, it's it's a scary proposition to, to pay 9,100 for Macy Barber. Next fight, Nate Landwehr going against Austin Lingo. Lingo was out of his fight a couple weeks ago. Something happened to his opponent. Now he's fighting Nate Landwehr. Uh, featherweight fight, 9,400 for Landwehr. Best, or has made optimal in two out of his last three fights. One of them, I think his last fight was against David Onama. A fantastic, amazing fight. If you have not seen that and you don't watch tape, it's fine. Go back and watch that fight. Onama against Landwehr. What a fight that was. 6,800 for Austin Lingo. Hasn't fought in over a year and a half. 2.62 points a minute. 82 points per win. Not something we're interested in. However, we might be interested in $1,800 under his average salary. While Nate Landwehr, 1620 over his average salary scores almost four points a minute 93 per win i believe i said he has made the optimal in two out of his past three fights lands 0. 0.4 0.82 points per minute and takedowns control time while austin lingo gives up 1.1 points per minute in those categories i like landwehr but i mean how could you not after his last uh performance against onama both guys with very good takedown defense 86 and 80 percent um, Landwehr controls 67.5% of all grappling time he's involved in compared to Austin Lingo controlling 45%. Landwehr's strength of schedule, 10 to 12 points better, it looks like, in every single category. 15 points better in the strength of defeat. Um, actually, nope, 5 points. I can't do math or read numbers. Landwehr coming off of wins, like I said, Onama, Ludovic Klein, and Darren Elkins lost to Julian Arosa and lost to Herbert Burns. Austin Lingo Lost to Yusuf Zalal, come, uh, beating Jacob Kilburn and Luis Saldana, who uh, completely death gassed, if I remember, after um, basically round one. Uh, I think that was that fight. Gosh, I can't remember. Here are my projections. Very, very close. A little bit higher for Lingo. I like Landwehr here. Um, I like him for cash. 9,400 is a lot. He is the most expensive fighter on the entire card. Uh, he gives up 121 per loss over his last two. Uh, has a very, very low floor. Three-point floor. 101-point ceiling. That's not great. But his average value per win is uh, 13.5 almost. 
Still, he needs to put up 125 against Austin Lingo, who doesn't really give up that much. How many points did he give up in his loss? Why is my computer frozen? There we go. 88 points is what he gave up. I might have to fade Landwehr, man, at 9,400. I don't know how I'm going to get to a ton of him this week, and I want to play him. He scores four points a minute, but in a three-round fight, that's just not going to do it for me uh, at all. I mean, he's going to score, like, what, 90 points in a decision? Um, or 83, as it were, on average, 83.67 per decision. Not going to get it done at 9,400. He did put up 104 in a split decision, but uh, I think that was that Onama fight, was it not? Yeah. Yeah, I might have to fade a little bit of land wear. I don't know how excited I am to play Austin Lingo, though, so I might be fading this fight. There's going to be a lot of people on land wear, I, I guarantee it. After that last one, they, they're going to see that high number he put up. What did I ever, whatever I said, 119, 103. Okay, that's not even close, but 104. Uh, they're going to see that number and uh, and jump on it. So Might have to go for a fade here. Holly Holm, 9K, going against Yana Santos, formerly Yana Kunitskaya. Um, I'm not interested in the Santos side, basically at all. Give me Holly Holm. She is 41 years old. I don't care. Three and a half points a minute, 101.74 per win. That's not really enough to get her on the optimal lineup at 9K. She is 500 over her average salary, but she only allows guys 1.7 points per minute in her last five. In her career, it's 1.69. So one of the best defensive paces on the entire card. Um, only is giving up 92 points per loss over her last two. Very high ceiling of 129 and a half. Very low floor. Meanwhile, Kunitskaya, very good minute score, four points a minute, 94 per win. Gives up 108 per loss. I just, I like Holly Holm better everywhere. Santos is probably just going to try to kickbox. Scores three points a minute in striking. Um, 0.76 points a minute in control time, but I bet a lot of that is cage time uh, up against the cage and whatnot. I don't think Holly Holm is going to allow Yana uh, Santos to keep her against the cage. Um, also, Holm does damage herself in the takedown and control time department. 1.24 points per minute in those two categories. Yana Santos allowing almost one point per minute. Um, her takedown defense is also terrible. 53.85% for Yana Santos losing fights to Aspen Lad, uh, Irene Aldana. Meanwhile, Holly Holm did lose her last fight to Ketlin Vieta. I think she won that fight, but uh, split decision. She did not get the W. And then Amanda Nunes is her only other loss. I love Holly Holm here. I think she gets it done even at 41 Almost 41 and a half years old. Holly Holm out here still getting it done over Yana. Honestly, I, I just I don't see how Yana wins this fight, to be completely honest. She should be outclassed basically everywhere. And um, I don't think Holly Holm is quite done yet. Have you seen her on Instagram? Woman is ripped. She looks like this every single time she fights, no matter you know if she's 31 or 41. Absolutely ripped. So give me Holly Holm here. Um, I don't know about for DraftKings, 9K. Sure, I'll have a little bit. It's not a women's flyweight fight. It is women's bantamweight. I'll probably be passing on Santos, but, I mean, you never know. Uh, if you're playing 150 maxes, you can't X her out. So uh, you got to keep her in there a little bit, but I really like Holm to win this fight. Guys, we did it. Before we go to the main event of the evening, please hit the like, hit the sub on this channel. Check out DFSArmy.com. Use code MONK, M-O-N-K. Save yourself some money on a subscription today. And stick around after we go over this last main event. Um, for CM Monk's picks and the Monk pick of the week. Last fight, Corey Sandhagen going against Marlon Cheeto Vera. I've seen a lot about this fight uh, on Twitter this week, and rightfully so. It's going to be a, a banger. Uh, Corey Sandhagen is someone you want to count out. Um, just by looking at this fight, I was thinking, oh, Cheeto, I think Cheeto's got a good chance. Corey Sandhagen is no goddamn joke, man. No joke. Very exciting guy to watch fight. Has made the optimal lineup in three of his past four fights scores three points a minute 106 per win gave up 109 on average per loss um he's coming in right at his average salary of his last five eighty six hundred dollars not expecting a ton of uh you know non-striking in this fight excuse me um 89 or 79 percent takedown defense for Sandhagen, which is 10 points better than Vera. His strength of schedule, though, is a little bit worse. Three to five points worse in every single category, but still over 70. So very, very respectable. Uh, lost or beat Song Yudong, beat Frankie Edgar, beat Marlon Moraes, lost to Dillashaw and Peter Yan. In fact, I believe this was Yan's only win now in his past four fights. Um, 
Meanwhile, Cheeto Vera coming in $1,000 under Corey Sandhagen and seven eighty dollars under his average salary, 3.5 points per minute, 104 per win, only allows 59 points in his last fight uh, is what he gave up in his career. He's giving up 73. That's it, over six losses. So that's a decent amount of losses. And he's only giving up 73 points on average, guys. So, man, fantastic uh, defensive pace as of late. Um, scores almost all of his points in striking and knockdowns. In fact, how many he put put Dominic Cruz down three times. He put Rob Font down three times, and he put Frankie Edgar down one time. Seven knockdowns in his past three fights, guys. Absolutely incredible. Meanwhile, Corey Sandhagen has two in his last five, but none since Frankie Edgar back in 2021. Um, here are my projections. Here are my projections. Uh, yeah, pretty a little bit higher for Cheeto Vera. A little bit surprising, but Cheeto has been turning it on lately on uh, his last five fights. Offensively, he's uh, scoring a lot better than he has in his uh, in his career. For instance, 3.53 points per minute is what he's scoring in his last five. In his career, it's 2.83. So 0.7 points per minute over his career average is his last five average. That's no joke. And he has made the optimal lineup in one out of his past four fights. That would have been the Rob Font fight in which he scored 100 and almost 129 against Rob Font in a five round beat down, just a beat down. Um, I don't know if I showed my projections. I think I did. I love this fight. I love this fight for DraftKings. Um, the salary voodoo here is fantastic. 8,600 is a great salary to play. 7,600 is not bad at all for an underdog. Um, and I really do like this fight. I'm going to pick Cheeto Vera to win, but I will have a lot of this fight for DraftKings and I would not be surprised to see Corey Sandhagen get his hand raised uh so yeah give me vera but uh in what should be a very exciting fight and i do like this fight a lot for DraftKings. um that is gonna do it guys i feel like there's something i was gonna say and then didn't but uh oh well that is gonna do it before we get out of here let's check out cm monk's picks last week not great last week was a rough fucking week man seven of seven because we had a push in that Klein fight, I mean, we lost Miller, we lost Carolina, beat or we got Hadley, lost Dusko, um, got Murphy, Mikhaev, lost Patterson, Jesus, got Duncan was our only correct dog pick that we got, got Shore, got Vittori, lost O'Neill, got Nelson, and then lost the last two. It was a rough ass week, seven and seven. We went fifty percent, but we're still at sixty six percent on the year. Guys, I did one fight worse. I went six and eight for a 42% on the week. I'm still at 62.7%. So over that 60% mark is where we want to be, and that's where we are. Let's check out this week. This is what you're here for. What do we got? We got a few upsets, guys. Wow, a few upsets uh, for sure. Tamir's Vidal to win by decision. Don't like that pick. Venetia Salvador, finish. Manuel Torres, decision. CJ Vergara, finish. Preston Parsons, finish. Steven Peterson's decision. Tucker Lutz finish. There we go. Chidi and Jukawani finish. Alex Perez by finish. Wow. If that happens, he should score very well. Andrea Lee decision. Nate Landwehr decision. Holly Holm decision. Marlon Cheeto Vera by decision in what should be a very close fight. Those are CM Monk's picks for the week. How do we do last week? The Monk pick of the week. I'm not even going to build it up. There's... Ugh. sad face king casey o'neill took her first l 8500 she did not do well let's see here um she she scored okay 54.8 points in a loss but she clearly lost that fight to uh jennifer maya who was just piecing her up all over all over the gaff as they say we were in london uh yeah 54 points was good but at 8500 that's not what i would call getting it done so we took a big l um on casey o'neill this week but still my girl still love to uh i mean i'm still rooting for her is what i mean when i say that big fan uh and she's still the king she, she's the king to me damn it that's a reference uh this week who is the monk pick of the week the most owned no nonsense pick of the week ufc san antonio it was tough to find one it was a bit tough but we did it guys it's gonna be tucker lutz Look at him. He doesn't even know what he's looking at. I think he might see a Philly cheesesteak 
uh somebody somebody mowing down on a cheesesteak outside of the cage i'm not really sure either that or the angel of death is about to take a huge knee uh one of those two things is about to happen 9200 for lutz yes he is the third most expensive fighter this week but man i think he has got a great shot going against daniel pineda getting up there in age 30 over 37 years old um coming off of like ped suspensions Give me Tucker Lutz. I don't have a ton to say about it. I just have a good feeling, and there's not a lot that I wanted to put on the line this week uh, for the Monk pick of the week. I couldn't choose Njukwani. I couldn't even choose uh, Manel Kopp. Nate Landwehr is the most expensive. Maybe Holly Holm I could have taken. Um, you know, CJ Vergara, but he's also very expensive. So, yeah, give me Tucker Lutz here to get the job done against um, whoever the hell I just said that he's fighting. Daniel Pineda. That is going to do it, guys. The Monk Pick of the Week. Most owned. No nonsense. Get them in your lineup. That's going to do it. UFC San Antonio. I believe we have a break next week, um, which uh, a much-needed break. I am actually moving. It is official. I am moving um, to Texas. Yeehaw, baby. Uh, moving to Texas in the next three to four weeks. I'm going to try my best to keep up with content, guys. It may be sporadic. I do apologize if that's the case. But I will uh, hopefully be all settled in after Easter, maybe the week after that. So uh, bear with me, but hopefully I won't miss out on too much. Be sure to check out all the other content I have coming your way this week. Um, there will be a Game Theory main event dissection that I'm recording right after this. So be sure to check that out. Get even more stats uh, for our two main event fighters here. Um, I've got DFS Army Pod, the Kill Shot Pod tomorrow. Um, Monk and Lose Happy Hour. We've got... We've got the Pub Sports Radio Show, all kinds of, hopefully, Salary Voodoo, if I can get to it this week. Hopefully I can. Um, but yeah, lots of stuff coming down the pipeline, guys. Check out MMA Engine as well. Blah, 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 blah. As usual, I want all of you to enjoy the fight. So, enjoy. And we will see you in the next one.